My name is Dr. Anna Mihaicha. I'm the president of AM Medical, and today I want to talk to you about an interesting topic. It's called senescence, longevity, and immortality. So what is senescence? Senescence is actually um, something that is related to cellular aging and how we're aging. And the reason why I want to talk about that is that if we are endeavoring to age reverse people and have them live longer or are considering topics like immortality, what do we have to address uh, in order to get to a place where we have enough control over the body to inhibit the aging process? First, let me tell you that I absolutely know that health and aging are also related to the mind. In fact, are governed to the mind. I've been well trained in that. Um, I have had enough experience as a physician to see miracles that lie outside of um, what the regular explanation of the medical field has to offer. But within the framework of uh, the fact that we are observers in the quantum field and that there is a, a study of the human which is called biophysics, which actually looks at um, people in terms of their light emission through biophotons, all of that uh, to me is um, very actual and it does not detract from some of the biochemistry that I'm going to talk about. In regards to then the physical manifestation of the possibility of endeavoring to help somebody to achieve longevity and in the end immortality. I call this immortality medicine because that is definitely an option and a possibility and that with the amount of knowledge that we now have about how our genes operate and what exactly is making the cells age. These areas appear complex, but they should be interesting to every human being alive. Why? Because you want to know why and how would you be able to live longer and healthier. So, if that is possible, which it is, is it a hard thing to understand? Well, it could be, but it's almost like a language that you're supposed to learn. Uh, and when you initially are starting with a foreign language, it is difficult to start with something like that. But eventually, you get into it. So let's start. First, senescence. Why do we have to know about this? As we are aging, our cells progress on a timeline and their youth diminishes and their ability to function diminishes over time. But for a long time, that process of aging is still reversible. Then it appears that there is something like a point of no return when a cell has become so old that it's now locked in an aging expression. In that aging expression, the cells start producing a lot of cytokines, meaning messengers that cause inflammation in the body. Inflammation makes all the surrounding cells age, including your stem cells. So, we have to control senescence for a number of reasons. Let me explain why. If we have a patient who's, for example, middle-aged, and they already have many cells locked in senescence, if we nutritionally optimize them and we give them a number of vitamins, and we want their body to repair itself, one of the problems that happens is that some people experience a worsening of their symptoms. Why is that? It's not that they're going through a healing crisis, 
but that I just gave food and nutrition to the healthy cells, but also the senescent cells that are locked. So they're spewing out more inflammation all around them. So what frequently happens is that those people where we haven't addressed the senescent cells are experiencing a decline, increased fatigue, and a completely paradoxical reaction because they should be feeling so much better with all this vitamin C and these B vitamins. So that is one aspect of the aging parameter. So there's several different mechanisms of how this senescence and this aging occurs. So one of the things that happens is that we can't sense nutrients as well, so we develop insulin resistance. Everything in aging is related to metabolism. When the sugar goes up, trouble starts. And it starts early, meaning at the doctors, when they check your blood sugar and you were to look at a fasting blood sugar and it's above 85, did you know that your cardiovascular risk already goes up by 40% even though your average blood sugar hasn't really gone up that much yet? You're not even pre-diabetic yet. But the fact that your insulin is rising and you're developing resistance to this insulin and you're not metabolizing sugar adequately is a sign that you're aging and that your aging process is accelerated. This metabolic change in the cell actually has a whole cascade of things that it's causing. So for example, your telomeres are getting shorter. Um, your stem cells are getting exhausted. There's a process called DNA methylation happening. So what is that? That's a marker of the epigenetic aging of your DNA, meaning how is the environment and the environment of your body changing you and aging the code of your genes. And when you have too much DNA methylation, certain genes cannot be expressed in a healthy way. So we measure, for example, your DNA age with this epigenetic methylation test. So those things are all part of this aging process, and there's more, like if your mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cells, get tired and don't produce energy, then your cells are going to uh, have problems. If your proteins aren't being folded adequately and they are not being made correctly, if the transcription uh, of your genes isn't adequate, all of those things matter. Okay, so then the other part is that we have a gene called P53, and that regulates the death of our cells. So when the cell is aging, that gene is supposed to kick in and lead to cell death, so that cell can then be removed. So one of the things that happens, for example, in diseases of aging, like with cancer, is that the cancer inactivates that gene and makes that cell immortal. So now you have a whole mess on your hand because you have dysfunctional cells like cancer that are reproducing themselves and are invading the organism. So basically there are all of these ways that we age and there are keys in our body that are able to control this process. So one of these keys is called mTOR. mTOR is a control mechanism. It is called the controller of longevity and aging. It could be called one of the immortality genes if you want. But basically what mTOR does when it is down-regulated, it controls all of the things that I described earlier. It controls the energy production in the mitochondria. It controls the aging of your stem cells. It controls how you metabolize things. It controls how you utilize blood sugar. All of these things, in conjunction with other genes, like FOXO1 or the CERT genes, we are having a number of sites that are able to control this process. 
So what do we do with that? Well, intimately related in the process of aging is also the immune system because all of your cells are aging. And one of the things that happens first is as we basically transcend our teenage years, our thymus gland is starting to shrink. The thymus is what controls our T cells and our immune system. But the thymus also has been shown to regulate the hormonal expression, for example, of some of the growth hormones. So if the thymus gland signal is going down, then your overall growth hormone signals are going down. Then again, we have a cascade of aging. When we use an anti-aging approach or a longevity approach, if we were to affect those areas, we can systematically block the aging process and we can reverse senescence. And it's been shown that that is possible with the help of peptides. We have peptides that are thymus peptides that are actually able to improve the immune function of the body. It removes the camouflage of these aging cells so that the immune system can see them and remove them. It's called senolytic action. So also these thymus peptides are able to downregulate inflammation. So all of the things that are causing problems in your cell um, are able to be downregulated. So when we do this, we also reduce things like oxidative stress because we're removing um, powerhouses of the cells like mitochondria that are not working right. So we're reactivating the thymus gland function and then we have other peptides that are actually are protective to the cells so they can unlock that aging state and reverse it back to a more reversible state. And when we keep people on these peptides, you can see a remarkable transformation of rejuvenation. Because not only are these genes being affected, uh, but also are we able to reverse some of these aging processes. There is one particular gene, the mTOR, that's been shown that it can be affected by a substance called rapamycin. Rapamycin um, has been sh uh, shown uh, to actually affect the immune system. It was initially found on Easter Island, in the dirt of Easter Island. So it's been shown in um, multiple animal models to extend lifespan by inhibiting this mTOR gene, this controller of longevity and aging. And more importantly, it also has been shown preventatively to prevent diseases of aging. Rapamycin is used uh, as a drug that is given to people who have had kidney transplants. So in high doses, it does have side effects because there are two genes of mTOR, mTOR1 and mTOR2. mTOR2 activation can cause problems with elevated cholesterol and elevated blood sugar. So we don't want that. We just want the beneficial effects of anti-aging. So the way we achieve this is an intermittent dosing of rapamycin, and that is to give a small amount every couple of weeks. So it's been shown in humans that rapamycin inhibits the epigenetic aging, actually. So that was what I was talking about earlier, the DNA methylation. So if we combine these things, these peptides with the rapamycin, with some of these other interventions that we have, we have very potent ways of accessing genes that are controlling our aging process 
and we have a possibility to, to achieve youthful longevity. And eventually, as we are able to control these genes with our mind and with these different substances, potentially immortality. Caloric restriction has been well researched and it does extend lifespan. It appears to uh, affect the cells through similar pathways. What does that mean? Well, it means that things like intermittent fasting act similar like mTOR. And if you, for example, eat from 8 in the morning till 4 o'clock in the afternoon and then fast for 16 hours, that will be considered intermittent fasting. And metabolically, this actually helps upregulate the beneficial genes and downregulate the bad genes. So we want to decrease inflammation by these interventions so that we don't um, have problems with these diseases of aging.